So I lost the beginning of the video because my camera refused to focus on me. But today we are going to see some advices that a more senior software engineer has to give. Let's get started. Hi guys, this is my first day at the company and I'm just very excited to know what project I'm going to work on and build amazing, amazing features and amazing things. Welcome, but what do you mean building new products? The, the, the project that I'm, I'm going to work, I'm really excited to, to know what I'm going to build, like a whole product from scratch. I'm really excited to do that. Oh no, we work with a legacy code base here. Uh, a, a legacy code? What, what is that? Well, a legacy code base is code that is poorly written or with bad developing practices. You're not going to develop anything new here. You're just going to be fixing bugs and be staring at the screen thinking, what were my colleagues thinking when they wrote this? <laughs> but in a uh, university, they taught me how to build whole applications from start to finish. I don't, I don't understand. I thought that was what I, what I was going to do in my work. Oh no, that's not what we do here in this project. No, but welcome. Hope you like it. Stay hydrated. The first lesson is you rarely write something from scratch. And I could not agree more. This even looks like a sentence that I said in one of my videos. Depending on the project, you will rarely build something from scratch. You know, things that were supposed to be already are. So it is unlikely that you will get into a project that you will have to build everything from scratch. You will probably start in a project that is already built and needs some maintenance. And when it comes to actually creating something new, that's probably not gonna happen. The author even says, in your university, they teach you how to write a 400 line program that solves a problem from A to Z. But in the real world, Bleh. But in the real world, you have a code base of several hundred thousand lines and you're trying to figure out what your colleagues were smoking when they wrote that marvelous piece. So no, don't go thinking that in your first job you just start writing flawless code in an amazing product. Probably not. Probably that project is already few years old and you're gonna have to maintain it and dealing with legacy code is a pain in the ass. The author says that he was surprised when he understood how much it easier it is to code when you understand the whole background of what you're building. And that is true. Imagine you are doing something but you don't know what you're doing it for or who you're doing it for how that is going to work and how the pieces are going to come together if you don't have the domain knowledge it becomes harder for you to understand what you're actually doing i have gone through this situation where i wasn't very aware what the project was and even though i tried as hard as i could to understand it i still couldn't wrap my head around it and it was much harder for me to understand the meetings, what they were talking about, what people meant, what the client was saying. For example, if you're building an app for a bank, it is important that you know how transactions work. It becomes way easier for you to know what you're building. So I totally agree with point number two. Point number three, he says that documentation is not emphasized enough. And I don't know if I agree because it depends. Emphasized by who? In college? Well, that really depends. In my case, I went to college, but I never finished it. Depending on the professor, they really push me to, you know, document my code and etc. But in the industry in general, it is very needed that you document your code because remember that when you're writing, you're not only writing for the machine to read, but also for other human beings. And it's important that you document your code well so that another developer that will get to it and someone will eventually in the future that he understands what you meant when you wrote the code. So documentation, I think it's, it's very undervalued, but at least in my case, it was very emphasized. Number four. Yes, I'm doing this so you guys can look at my nails. I just got them done, look. 
code its secondary business value is first uh i agree and he says nobody nobody's going to come up to you and say oh wow great job on writing that one liner amazing instead they will say users are happy with the feature that you wrote in an engineering point of view it is cool that you write flawless code but then again it's for other developers to read for the client they want to to have something that solves their problem some platform that will do its own program and it will always come first this uh, some technical decisions cannot be may not be only technical but also kind of political design patterns and code practices clean code and etc it's all for us you know for us and for other developers but when it comes to the client they just want to get the work done the code is simply a way that you're going to use to achieve this number four no it's actually number five you'll need to work around incompetence you remember when you were in high school and there was always someone who couldn't get the work done when there were like group tasks to be done well it's no different when you become an adult people still don't want to do their work and that is common i'm not going to say this is normal but that is very common all my student life I was always the one who got the work done and eventually there was someone on my team who didn't do anything. Do I think that was a problem? No, I loved it because I was kind of a control freak and I wanted to, to do the job and I wanted to do the job, I didn't want people to do the job. That's not a very cool behavior to have, but I liked when people didn't do anything. But from the moment they started to bother me and that this has never happened only once in college, I... <sighs> I mean, there's a saying in Portuguese that is Se não vai ajudar, não atrapalha If you're not going to help, don't bother And I think that is something that we all need to take to our lives And the fact that you will need to work around other people's incompetence is very daunting Because sometimes your work will depend on other people's work to get done So you can start your work or do your work well. So it's very, so yes, it's very frustrating and there is nothing you can do. You know, that's the sad part about it. You have to work around this incompetence. Please don't be an incompetent worker, an incompetent developer. And I'm not saying here things like, okay, you have more of a difficulty in grasping new concepts or developing features that may be actually hard to implement. But trying to do it and trying to do your best in your work, you know, people will notice. But when you're doing a crappy job, People will notice too, because their jobs cannot be done without yours. You are holding back the team, you are stopping things from happening. So if you follow this channel, you're not going to be an incompetent developer. You work with uncertainty most of the time. Dealing with people is hard. Dealing with a certainty is hard. And dealing with a certain people is harder. I think it's very complicated from day one to organize and plan and architecture the system in a way that is going to be unchangeable. Most of the times you will work and you will not actually know what you're doing number i don't know assume everything has bugs you know that feeling when you're coding and you get an error and then you work towards that error so much and you get happy when the cold soul shows you another error when you assume everything already has bugs and it probably does and uh, yes we can never be entirely sure of our code because sometimes uh little things may have been missed and even if you're using third-part libraries and you're working with other people's code and you're assuming that they're more competent developers so of course there will be no bugs right but that's not how it works the longest phase in the life cycle of a software is maintenance and a software is never ready i saw a question on quora once why does spotify why does netflix why does any product company hire so many developers and still and still develops things if the software is already done and nothing is ever already done nothing already built there will be bugs there will be new features and there will be things that need to be implemented so Assume everything has but. Number I don't know is it's not a dream job. And being a software developer sure has its perks and benefits. And we all know that it's not, not a dream job because 
the heck i'm not going to dream about a job but i think what the author meant here is that it's a stressful job depending on what you're doing and i kind of agree because lately i have been getting a lot of messages from people that want to become software developers and they think everything is amazing but of course there are some things that are not very spoken it's not something that you will learn from a youtube video from a 22 year old girl who's a software developer for two years it's something that you will learn and you will see when you start the job and when you get the work done and when you work in a team and when you're surrounded by people you know i can sit here and talk for hours about how it's a stressful job how you have to deal with deadlines how blah 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 but every job has its downsides and for me the software development field is worth it i don't think it's worth for a lot of people who come only for the money and i know people say well but we work for money that's what we all work for but something that takes up eight hours of your day that you need to do for the rest of your life if you're not at least not in a happy doing it it's going to mess up with your mental health so like i said it's not something i can just sit here and talk about how bad it is or how good it is you will learn on the get-go you will learn when you are actually starting to work and you will see how that goes it is probably very easy for me to sit here and say that if you're studying and if you're working towards it you will get it and sometimes that's not true sometimes no matter how hard you try it just doesn't happen i have started so many so many side jobs or sidekicks and none of them worked and i don't consider myself a failure because they didn't work and i didn't continue because deep down i didn't want you know i didn't want that for me i want what i'm doing now here recording youtube videos and i have a trip scheduled for tomorrow i have to take a bus at night but i'm here and um i'm recording content for you guys and that is what i like to do that is what i enjoy doing and editing this video i'm sure i'm going to have lots of fun doing it i'm not going to come here with the speech of do what you love you know work with what you love and you're never gonna have to work for your entire life that may be true for a lot of people and for a lot of work out there works out there but software development at least for me is definitely not one of those i am 100 percent not unhappy doing what i do i like what i do but it's still a work for me if you have tried and you have failed and you have tried and you have failed and you have tried and you have failed but you're still there and you're still trying and you're wondering if that's just for you there is not a way for you to find that out i'm sorry i know you wanted an answer but there is no way that i can give you this answer sometimes i feel like it is not for me as well because i am not an amazing developer i try my i try very hard i i work very hard but it's not natural for me you know i think that for for example my boyfriend he's very gifted in terms of programming and in terms of technology and i'm not and i wanted to be but take a lot of time to learn new concepts not so much to understand but to piece everything together so it really depends you don't have to be a genius and you find that out when you start working and you see that uh, there are a lot of more people more incompetent than you that are doing better than you this hasn't happened to me but i see it happen happening with a lot of people and that's it i took this time to say a lot of things that i don't think are related but thank you for watching until now see you in the next one